Hi, I'm Emily. Growing up, my life was like being a shadow in a brightly lit room. Always there, but rarely noticed. You see, my younger brother Jake was the golden child. Our parents gave him everything he wanted, while I had to fight for every small achievement. When I was about eight, I remember one Christmas morning when Jake threw a tantrum because I got a new bike. It was secondhand, but it was new to me. Before the day was over, my parents rushed out to buy him a brand new one just to stop his crying. That was my normal. Things didn't improve as we got older. High school was a mix of me getting good grades and Jake barely passing, with our parents praising his mediocre efforts as if he'd won academic awards. Emily, why can't you be more supportive of your brother? He needs us more. My mom would say. It was always about what Jake needed. By the time I was 18, I had enough. I packed my bags and moved out, finding a job at a local garage sweeping floors and doing oil changes. The owner, a gruff old guy named Bill, saw something in me. You've got a knack for this, he told me one day, handing me a wrench. That was the start of my education in auto repair. Over the next seven years, I worked my way up from that dusty floor to becoming Bill's top mechanic. I saved every dime I could, working nights and weekends at the garage. When Bill decided to retire, I was ready. With the money I'd saved and a small loan, I bought the shop. At 25, I became the owner of my own business, Emily's Auto Clinic. The place wasn't much at first, just a couple of old lifts and a waiting area that smelled like motor oil and coffee, but it was mine. I worked hard, revamped the shop, hired a few good people, and soon we were known as the best in town. My success, though, seemed to only deepen the divide back home. My parents, still doting on an increasingly aimless Jake, viewed my independence as a challenge rather than an achievement. I heard through the grapevine, thanks to Aunt Linda, who couldn't keep a secret if it was super glued to her lips, that they were baffled at how I did it all on my home. Emily's just lucky, I guess, my dad would say, his voice tinged with disbelief, but luck had nothing to do with it. It was all those nights under the hoods of cars. Every weekend spent learning about engines and electrical systems, while Jake partied and squandered the college fund our parents had scraped together. Yet despite all this, there's still a part of me that loves them. It's why, when they showed up at my shop that day with Jake in tow, my heart didn't just sink, it shattered. Emily, we need to talk, my dad said as they walked into my shop unannounced, Jake trailing behind them like he owned the place. Sure, what's up? I asked, sensing something was off. Dad cleared his throat, glancing at Jake before speaking. Well, Emily, we've been talking, and we think it's time Jake took over the business here. I laughed, thinking it was a joke. Come again. Yeah, Emily, I'm ready to run things now. You can stay and work the floor, but I'll handle the business side of things, Jake said, his tone casual as if this was the most natural thing in the world. The room seemed to spin for a moment. You're serious? I stared at them, my heart pounding in disbelief. Mom chimed in, her voice soft but firm. It's for the best, honey. You know how hard it's been for Jake since he dropped out. This could really turn things around for him. But this is my business. I built it from scratch. I protested, my voice rising. Dad's tone was stern. And it's time you thought about family, Emily. Jake needs this more than you do now. Needs it. I earned this. Why should I just hand it over? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Jake sneered, because I'm the one who should have been doing this all along. You just got lucky, sis. Lucky. Do you even hear yourself? I was shouting now, anger flaring. I worked day and night to build this place. You never even liked mechanics. Mom tried to soothe the situation. We know you've worked hard, Emily, but Jake is your brother. Helping him is the right thing to do. Help by giving away my business? How is that fair? Dad was losing patience. Life isn't always about what's fair, Emily. It's about family. This is my livelihood. You're asking me to just step aside for him. What about what I want? What about what I've worked for? Jake scoffed. Come on, Emily. It's not like you can't find another job. Let me have this. That's enough. This is my shop, and I'm not handing it over to anyone, especially not under these ridiculous circumstances. Mom looked at me with disappointment. I thought you cared about your family, Ellie. I do care, but this, this isn't caring. This is taking advantage. The tension in the air was thick. Each word from them felt like a betrayal. You need to leave now. 
Dad shook his head as they turned to go. Emily, you're making a big mistake. As the door slammed behind them, my breaths were heavy. A mix of rage and heartbreak. They came here to strip me of everything I have worked for under the guise of family support. This was the moment I knew things would never be the same again. Crash. The sound of breaking glass jolted me out of my paperwork. I rushed to my office door just in time to see Jake climbing through the broken window, his face twisted in determination. What the hell are you doing, Jake? My voice was a mix of shock and anger. He brushed off his jeans nonchalantly. Dad said you agreed to let me take over today. Figured I'd start early. Agreed? Are you insane? I never agreed to anything. I couldn't believe the audacity. Jake smirked, moving past me to sit at my desk. Come on, Emily. Dad said you'd see sense. It's time for me to run things. This is breaking and entering, Jake. Get out now, or I'm calling the cops. My hand hovered over my phone. He shrugged, clearly unbothered. Go ahead. Dad will just bail me out. You really think he'll take your side over family? Family? Is that what you call this? My anger boiled over as I dialed 911. I reported the break-in while Jake watched, his smirk never fading. The police arrived within minutes. An officer stepped into my office, assessing the situation. Jake, you need to leave now, or you'll be arrested for trespassing, he warned. Jake stood up, defiant. She's my sister. She's making a big deal out of nothing. I shook my head, my resolve hardening. I want him arrested, he broke into my office and refuses to leave. The officer nodded and cuffed Jake. Once the police had taken Jake away, I sat in the quiet of my vandalized office, the broken window a stark reminder of the day's events. The next morning, I applied for a restraining order. As I sat in a courthouse filling out the forms, I felt a mix of relief and sorrow. This was the final break. My family's entitlement had pushed me to this point, and there was no turning back. The restraining order was granted without issue, and the judge's stern look as he handed it to me seemed to convey an understanding beyond what he could put into words. Leaving the courthouse, the weight of the day settled over me. This wasn't just about a broken window or a disrupted office. It was about breaking free from a lifetime of being undermined and undervalued. That night, I secured the broken window as best I could and made plans for a new security system. The reality of my situation was clear. If Jake and my parents were willing to go this far, who knew what they try next? But one thing was certain. I was not going to let them destroy what I had built. As I locked up the shop, I looked around at the tools and cars, each one a testament to my hard work and dedication. This was my place, my achievement. No amount of familial manipulation could take that from me. It was time to move forward, to build even bigger, and to prove that I was more than they ever gave me credit for. The shop was quiet, the only sounds being the distant hum of the city and the occasional clank of metal cooling in the night air. In that moment, I knew I had made the right decision. The days following Jake's arrest and my filing for a restraining order were a whirlwind of gossip and mixed reactions. Walking into the local diner, I could feel eyes on me, whispers trailing in my wake. Some of the townspeople sided with my family, their glances cold and judgmental. Emily, how could you do that to your own brother? Mrs. Thompson, a longtime family friend, asked, her disappointment palpable. I sighed, my patience wearing thin. He broke into my shop, Mrs. Thompson. I had to protect my business. Others, however, admired my resolve. Mike, a fellow business owner, clapped me on the back as I left the diner. You did what you had to, Emily. Can't let family push you around if it's bad for business. Grateful for the support, I focus on the path ahead. The incident with Jake had exposed vulnerabilities in my business that I couldn't ignore. It was clear I needed to fortify my shop, both legally and financially, to prevent any future claims or disruptions. I spent the next few weeks meeting with lawyers and financial advisors, tightening up every loose end. Emily, it's essential you have clear legal documentation about the ownership and operations of your shop. My lawyer, Mr. Carlson, advised during one of our sessions. We drafted several documents that solidified my sole ownership and laid out explicit protocols for business operations and succession. Meanwhile, I also worked on a strategic plan for expansion. I had always envisioned opening a second location and now seemed like the perfect time to move forward. Researching potential spots, I drove around neighboring towns scouting locations that offered growth opportunities. 
one promising area had a high demand for auto repairs, but few service providers. I negotiated a lease for a suitable space, envisioning a new branch of Emily's Auto Clinic that could serve a broader community. Back at the shop, I held meetings with my team, keeping them updated and involved. We're expanding, I announced one afternoon, a buzz of excitement filling the room. And I want all of you to be a part of this journey. We're not just a team, we're a family, the kind that supports each other. This period of reaffirmation and growth was busy but fulfilling. As I implemented the new security systems and reinforced our practices, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. My evenings were spent reviewing business plans and preparing for the opening of the new location. Every step I took was a testament to my dedication to my craft and my independence. It wasn't just about proving my family wrong anymore. It was about building the life I deserved. It was about proving to myself that I could rise above any challenge. As the dust settled from the upheaval with my family, I turned my focus outward, forging a path that was wholly my own. The community's response was mixed, but over time, those who supported my decision to stand firm against my family's entitlement began to rally around me, forming a new chosen family. The centerpiece of this new chapter was Mia, a young woman fresh out of vocational school. Hungry for an opportunity to prove herself in the world of auto mechanics, a world still dominated by men. When she first walked into my shop, her situation mirrored the early days of my own career. I've knocked on every door in town. Emily, Mia admitted during her interview, her eyes determined yet anxious. Yours is the last shop on my list. I saw a younger version of myself in her, the same drive, the same need to prove that talent isn't gendered. You're hired. I said without a second thought. But I'm warning you, it's tough here, and I run a tight ship. Mia grinned, the relief evident on her face. I wouldn't have it any other way. Mentoring Mia was as much a learning experience for me as it was for her. As I taught her the intricacies of diagnostics and repair, she reminded me of the power of resilience and the importance of giving someone a chance. The chance I once craved and fought for. Together, we tackled complex repairs and overhauled engines. Her presence brought a new energy to the shop, and her quick learning and dedication quickly earned her the respect of the rest of the crew. It wasn't long before customers were asking for her by name. Seeing you handle that wrench, it's clear you were meant for this, I told her one afternoon, a smile playing on my lips as we worked on a particularly stubborn old truck. Mia wiped the sweat from her brow, returning the smile couldn't have done it without a great teacher. The culmination of our hard work and community support came to fruition with the grand opening of the second location of Emily's Auto Clinic. To celebrate, I organized a community event inviting local businesses, customers, and friends to join us for a day of celebration. The event was a hit, a carnival of sorts with food stalls, music, and free vehicle checkups. Children darted between stands, their laughter mingling with the chatter of the crowd. It was more than a promotional event, it was a testament to the community that had embraced me and the business I had built from the ground up. As I stood back and watched the festivities, I couldn't help but reflect on the journey. My parents and Jake were nowhere in sight, their absence a stark contrast to the full, vibrant scene before me. They had chosen their path, one that led them away from this success and happiness. In their place, I had found a richer connection with those around me, proving that family isn't always defined by blood. It's defined by the support, respect, and love you find along the way. Here's to new beginnings, I toasted with Mia, raising my glass to the bustling crowd, to the thriving business, and to the endless possibilities that lay ahead. As the sun set behind us, painting the sky with hues of orange and purple, the lights from the event cast a warm glow over everything. This was more than my recovery, it was a rebirth. That's the end of my story. Now here's a question for you all. Do you think Emily was right to stand her ground against her family's demands, even though it led to estrangement? Or should she have found a compromise to maintain family unity? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more stories of resilience and triumph. Thank you for watching.